do we have enough data at this stage to say conclusively that this variant is indeed less severe than Delta? Not at this stage. Uh, we will see hospitalizations uh, begin to rise in uh, post Christmas. So quite soon it will be there in terms of the um, real uh, evidence to, to show um, that whether it is more severe and if we do have an increase in hospitalizations or if many have proposed uh, that the theory that it's spreading faster, therefore it may lose some of its virulence, uh, keeps hold. I think the major fear, however, is that by that point, given all of the pressure that the NHS has been under for the past uh, two years, it, NHS is not in the same place of resilience as it was in the beginning of the pandemic. So although we have vaccines and other tools, there are other aspects that we also need to consider, including having the lowest number of uh, ICU beds and capacity uh, across all of Western Europe. Oksana, can we actually take South Africa as a template or does the virus you know, act differently? Like what data are you looking at to understand whether it's less severe than Delta? So there has been a lot of speculation coming out of the fact that South Africa has fared well uh, with Omicron. So they're not seeing that um, huge peak in hospitalizations. And that's potentially for two reasons. One being that uh, they had quite a lot of exposure uh, in the uh, other waves as well. So if we're looking at uh, even Delta, Alpha, etc. So there's already, uh, let's say, built up immunity more so uh, than in the UK from that perspective. Uh, and they have a younger population. So that's also going to mean that re less risk of hospitalization in general. Um, so it can be difficult to extrapolate, particularly now, because there are many more variables to consider. Um, it, we don't have a blank slate where, you know, again, starting in, in the beginning of the pandemic, uh, there were no vaccines available anywhere. So it perhaps is easier to make those types of comparisons. Uh, but it is tricky now to um, make that assumption here in the UK. And the uh, chief medical officer, uh, Professor Chris Whitty, made that very clear in the last uh, number 10 press conference. Oksana, what do you make of Israel coming out with its fourth, fourth shot? Is that, is that the template that's going to be followed by other countries as the effects of the booster start to wane in the months ahead? Is a fourth shot now looking inevitable? Well, <clears throat> I think that depending on uh, what the next variant could be, we're, we're looking at uh, perhaps pharmaceutical companies tweaking on a yearly basis so that there is a, either multivalent vaccines, uh, something that could identify uh, various strains. So, for instance, with flu vaccine, um, you can have a, a mixed vaccine that works against different strains. And th that research is happening right now. So until we get to a stage where um, those become available, we may need to look at top-up doses. Uh, and again, that will uh, maybe pose a bit of a challenge in terms of acceptability amongst populations. Uh, but certainly, I think everyone is on the same page that they want to get back um, to life as normal. And if that means looking at a yearly a new vaccine, just as we have for flu, I think that people will be lining up to get it. Um, Oksana, when you look at you know some of the reports out there today in The Independent and other media, I think we also had something in Business Week, there's talk or chatter about a pill that would then be effective against all coronavirus. How far away would we be from something like that? Well, hopefully that puts us in a position where in, we are in the last winter of making really difficult decisions um, for in terms of protecting the healthcare system and damage done to businesses uh, because we already have... A, available some antiviral med medicines. Uh, both Merck uh, and Pfizer have come out with that. Currently, however, there is a supply problem, so it's not going to make much of an impact in the current Omicron wave, but will become more available in future, such that, uh, again, we'll have a wider tool kit available to us and uh, new types of medication that have uh, wider recognition. And, it, and that stops the replication of the virus. It garbles up the DNA so that you don't have that same level of replication. We know with Omicron, it replicates 70 times faster in the upper airways compared to previous strains. And that's also thought to contribute towards its extremely high transmissibility. So I think it's around the corner and it'll be one of the things that help us to um, get out of this mess. <laughs>
Yeah, Oksana, some experts have come out in the last few days and said that, look, given the nature of Omicron and the new treatments coming down the pipe from the likes of Pfizer and Merck, that we're going to get to a point where this is going to be endemic sometime in the middle of next year. Endemic to the point where it's like a, more like a flu. Are, are we getting to that point? Are we getting close to the end of this? Are we looking at the end possibly in next year? Well, we're definitely trans uh, transitioning into it becoming endemic. And we're already seeing that with boosters, the uh, number of cases that are asymptomatic or mild uh, are increasing because it's, the vaccine is what's muting uh, the severity of symptoms. So uh, that's why it's also been very difficult to unpick the data in terms of is the strain itself more mild? Is this the effect of the, the vaccines uh, themselves? And we see the data is looking pretty good. Uh, with uh, booster shots, it's a reduction of hospitalization by 80 percent, which is uh, what we're looking at and brings it down uh, towards the level of flu, certainly um, as, as more medications come out as well. So we're, we're on that path and it's looking again, like I said, probably the last hard winter uh, due to COVID unless, <laughs> well, we won't go into that scenario, but uh, let's make sure that everyone has access <laughs> to vaccines globally. <laughs>